It's do or die time for the St. Louis Gladiators as they play their final home game of the regular season on home turf at Budweiser Stadium. A win for the green and gold keeps their sl slim playoff hopes alive. However, they will face a stern test from the Tulsa Desperados, the expansion team that has defied the odds all season. But they have lost two straight and are in danger of dropping out of first place in the Central. Your Week 10 Sunday Slate starts right now on YouTube. Good afternoon, I'm your play-by-play -play commentator, Michael Torello. Joining me in the booth today is Levant Mercer. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing out here? I'm doing great. Getting ready to watch some fantastic SFL action. It's going to be a good game. We're going to send it down to the field for the coin toss. And the Desperados will kick the ball off first. And the kicker, K. Joseph Carroll, has the ball at the 30-yard line. The whistle goes, and it's game on from Budweiser Stadium here in St. Louis, returning from the 5 up to the 20, right side 30, just shy of the 30-yard line. Comes Nate Haslep on the return, and that is how we begin today's ball game. We'll get you your roster rundown for the St. Louis offense. The quarterback is number 12, Dylan Aseel. The running back is number 23, Denzel Diaz. The wideouts are number 11, Nick Finch. And number 88, Cody Scott. And the tight end is number 87, Elijah Swaim. First play from scrimmage, heavy set, no one in the backfield. And a move to the left from Aseel. Goes down the field, he's got a man out there. And the catch is made. There goes Scott down the sideline. He breaks a tackle, 10-5, touchdown! Put it on the board. Oh, my goodness. First play from scrimmage of the Gladiators on top 6 nothing. Levant, did I lose you? Are you still there? And we apparently have lost Levant Mercer for the time being. Uh, he will get back in, I'm sure, when he can. But first play from scrimmage is a 72-yard touchdown score. A seal to Cody Scott, and the kicker, Graham Northrup, is on the field to attempt the extra point. The extra point is up and good. And with 10 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in this afternoon's first quarter, it's St. Louis 7, Tulsa nothing. What a rocking start to the game. Receive live SFL score updates from the Score Stream app on Android and iOS to get all the action from across the league at your fingertips. Return for Tulsa. Spin move gets him up to the 30-yard line. The kick returner for Tulsa today is Charles Ball, their standout strong safety. Will get you the Tulsa starting offense. The quarterback is number four, Sir Charles Robinson. The running back is number 22, Dion Hawkins. The wideouts are number 13, Corey Jones. Number 15, Sansa Robinson. The tight end is Luis Latore. First play from scrimmage, three to the left, one to the right, one in the backfield alongside Robinson. Robinson drops back to pass, no pressure, but he'll step up in the pocket, throws to the far side, and that pass is incomplete. It was caught by the receiver Jones, but he did not stay in bounds, second down and ten upcoming. Like somebody was leaping for nothing earlier there. Like, I don't know who that was, but what? We have an immediate challenge out of Tulsa. So they're going to say he was in bounds, although I didn't see any reason to think that he was. Also, welcome back, Levant. <laughs> we lost you for a minute there. Let's look at this. That's actually closer than I thought it was. 
But I let's let's see what we got here. I I saw the foot in. Yeah, they're gonna say the ruling on the field is overturned. Tulsa will get the second down and short, not second down and ten. It ends up being a good challenge by the Tulsa coach, by Tulsa coaching staff, and we're gonna be second down and one, or two rather. Let's get you the St. Louis defense. The safeties are number 21, Freeman Peltier, and number 31, Nick Daggs. The cornerbacks are Aaron Arrington and Colin Douglas, wearing numbers 24 and 44, respectively. The linebacker, I'll finish that after this play, as up the middle goes Hawkins, and Hawkins is stuffed after a gain of one. It'll be third down and short. Let's finish up the St. Louis defense. The linebacker is number 55, Aiden Friday. The defensive end is 67, Scott LaRue, and the defensive tackle is number 70, Manny Eisenhower. Three backs in the backfield, and here goes Hawkins. Hawkins will burst through for the first down. And it's going to be a first down and set up at the 41-yard line. Second down, uh, first down and 10, rather, from just past the 40. Robinson takes it back to pass, stands there all day to throw, goes over the middle of that pass, is picked off at the 40-yard line. Take it away. Big play by Nate Heslep. He returns kicks and he catches. That was, sorry, Freeman Peltier. I was reading the wrong roster. Pardon me. That was Freeman Peltier, the safety number 21 for St. Louis, takes the ball away and St. And the Gladiators, needing a win to stay alive in the playoff race, are now up 7 nothing and have the ball back. I don't know. I think uh, Sir Charles Robinson's confidence must have been shaken after the two losses the past couple weeks. Trips to the near side, one to the left, and it's going to be a sneak up the middle from a seal. He'll get six yards as the defense wasn't really expecting it there. And it's second down and four. You're right. Uh, that's one of my big offensive key to the game I have for Tulsa. Sir Charles Robinson has got to play better, better than his, the last couple of weeks. He's had some disappointing performances, and the team has struggled offensively because of it, and they've dropped two straight games. And offensively for St. Louis, can Dylan Asiel handle the pressure and keep up the offensive output? Uh, this is the most pressure he'll have faced as a quarterback in the SFL. Flare out to the near side on second down. It's going to be just short as Elijah Swain makes that catch, then steps out of bounds. It'll be third down and inches right at the midfield strike. I see St. Louis has a very interesting game plan. They're trying to go for the whole shock and awe package, not uh, keeping Tulsa on their toes. Well, St. Louis is 3-7, and seven, so they got to get something going the last two weeks. they got to win both games and have other things go their way if they want to make the playoffs. Here's a run off the left side. It's a good one and pass the defense, and he could go up the sideline. On tackle, broken 10-5, put it on the board! Touchdown, Denzel Diaz, 50 yards, and it's two scores in the opening five minutes for the Gladiators. Welcome to the SFL, the Tulsa Desperados, because look at this. Look at this. They're collapsing. Denzel Diaz is just showing them for what they're not. Look at this. Get off me. Thank you. See you. Goodbye. We have a 72-yard touchdown pass and a 50-yard touchdown run. The St. Louis offense came to play today, and Graham Northrup is on for his second extra point attempt of the first quarter. Now, I have in my notes for this game that if St. Louis wants to win, they're going to have to put up 20-plus points because Tulsa can score with the best of them. And they've already got 14. Well, they're definitely going, as I said earlier, for the shock and awe package. I am absolutely stunned right now. Kick off again. Charles Ball back to receive. Standing at his own five-yard line, he'll take it up to the 10. 15-20 running left side. And across to the 25-yard line, and that is where he will go down. 
tackled by 66 Billy Bob Johnson to tackle during special teams duty. Charles Ball leads the league in interceptions this season with eight, but he can't really help if the offense is struggling. They've had one possession and threw a pick. Let's see if the Desperados, wearing all white with red and green highlights, can do better on their second position right from the 25-yard line. Hand off up the middle and off. Oh! He loses two yards, shouldered to the ground, goes Dion Hawkins. Vicious hit, laid by 90, 87, no, 97. That's Bo Knowles, the linebacker, coming up and making the tackle. But make no mistake about it, St. Louis has a good front seven. Three to the left, one to the right. This is the same formation that Robinson threw a pick out of on their first drive. Second down and 12 from the 23. Hand off up the middle to Hawkins. This time he gets a block and gets free. And he uses his legs to get 13 yards and a first down up to the 35. We've got some score updates for you from around the league. London and Carolina is also in the first quarter. 7-0 Carolina. Dallas, and Van Dallas leads Vancouver 7-0 in the first quarter. And those are the other two games going on. At this moment, as your Sunday slate kicks off on the SFL Network on YouTube. Two runs, and a first down for the Desperados. First down and 10 from the 35. Two in the backfield, two to the right, one to the left. Another run for Hawkins right up the middle. Spin move breaks one tackle. He drags three defenders down for a hard earned six yards. We have two potential Hall of Famers here, uh, one on offense, one on defense, Hawkins for Tulsa and Aaron, Aaron Arrington for St. Louis. So I wanted to see how this plays out today. Well, Aaron Arrington most likely is covering Corey Jones. He's been their best uh, receiver. We'll have to see how that matchup plays out. Another run here, and this time again, as uh, sorry, Hawkins goes nowhere. He loses four yards back to the uh, 37 yard line Manny Eisenhower big defensive tackle just blows right through the guard Elvis Lacosta and that's a, another four yard loss so six lost rushing yards so far on this drive not the way Hawkins really wanted to start this game third down and eight Robinson to throw. He'll dump it off short to Hawkins. Hawkins breaks one tackle, but cannot get away from Nick Dagg. The safety up to make the tackle. It'll be fourth down and two. And another drive stalls for the Desperados. I mean, a saving grace that we can say is that there's still a lot of time left in this game for Tulsa to shake off the cobwebs and come right back. They're good at coming back. They are. They've had a lot of comebacks this year, including a Hail Mary game winner earlier in the season. Freeman Peltier takes the ball up just a few yards from the punt up to the 26-yard line. That punt was by Billy Perry, the Tulsa punter. And Dylan Aseel comes back on the field looking to pad a 14-point lead already, 5.58 to go. First quarter, this is the SFL presented by APM Music. I formation on first down with a receiver each side. Aseel changes the play at the line. Four down linemen, and it looks like a blitz might be coming up here from the Desperados. They bring the house and the run goes up to the left side. And only one yard gained by... Uh, Diaz as he was hit by the safety who came up to make the tackle. Second down, empty set on second and nine for the Gladiators. A seal with four wide, two to each side, and a tight end. He's got plenty of time to throw. Now the pressure comes. He gets the ball out over the middle into traffic. And it's caught right at the midfield stripe. Elijah Swain, big tight end out there, making the catch with all sorts of defense around him. They're starting to attack the middle, and that's what teams have been doing against Tulsa, and it's been working out. They've been finding that exact gap that Sioux Falls and other teams have found and are probably going to exploit it all game until they figure it out. 
And they go with the heavier set this time. Trips to the left, one to the right, one to the backfield behind a seal who's under center. A seal will throw. Side arms it out to the near side for Cody Scott. He steps out of bounds after a four yard gain. Let's do a chat shout out. Dwayne Schindler, Scott LaRue, Nate Hesleff, Kanye Rockefeller, AJ Levy, DeAndre Noel, Christian Tyler Edwards. Hey, Christian. Uh, um, and Jeff DK and everybody else watching tonight, or this afternoon, rather. Welcome. Second down and six. Quick hitter over the middle. That pass is complete up to the 39-yard line into Tulsa territory. Cody Scott again on the reception. That's what St. Louis needs. You need to keep moving the chains, keep putting Tulsa on the back foot, making them tired, making them earn it. Well, Tulsa's going to have to earn it because St. Louis came to play and their fans are seeing a good production out of them early. Two, uh, two backs in the backfield beside a seal and the handoff goes to Diaz who gets nothing as the tackle was made by T. Amani, the guard. I see a Shan Varner in the chat as well. Second down and 10 for the Gladiators in all green, gold helmets, and white numbers today. From the 39-yard line, handoff right up the middle. And it's only going to be two yards for Diaz as he could not find a hole through the front line of the Desperados. London is on the board against Carolina at 7-3 in the first quarter of, over there. No score in the other games on this Sunday afternoon. A seal back to pass on third and eight. Goes it out there. A catch and a fumble. And it's picked up by the Desperados. I don't believe he had possession of the ball long enough for that to count. But let's see. What a crazy. Elijah Swain made the catch. Then fumbled. And the ball was picked up. By, I think it was Charles Ball out there. Yeah, it was Charles Ball out there who picks up the loose football. And Tulsa's going to get possession here after a, a wacky play. St. Louis doesn't look like they're going to challenge it. And it's, uh, oh, no, they are going to challenge it. I spoke too soon. It's so a really good challenge. I don't think he had even long enough. I feel like that wasn't even a second. That's an incomplete pass. I'm sorry. Yeah, it looked to me like an incomplete pass as well, but we shall see what the referees rule. I mean, he, he did have the ball in both hands, but I don't know if it was long enough to, to say possession, but we shall see. Here comes the referee with the verdict. After review, the receiver did have possession. It is therefore ruled a fumble. The gladiator will not And let's see. It said the ruling on the field was overturned, but the the voice of the referee spoke otherwise, but they, they did overturn it. They overturned it, so instead of a first down and 10 for, death for Tulsa, it's going to be fourth down and eight for uh, St. Louis. And I, I don't know, as the punt gets away down towards the five, it's going to bounce there and go into the end zone. Tulsa's going to get the ball around the same field position. I, I honestly think that might have just been a waste of time to challenge it because it was going to be fourth down anyway. Yeah, but there was always the chance that the punt puts them in a worse spot. It just didn't happen, but it was a chance. First down and 10 for Tulsa from the 20-yard line. Two to the right, one to the left, offset eye. And here goes Hawkins. He gets the handoff, and then he's sandwiched between two defenders. Lost a yard in the process off the right side. Three minutes to go, first quarter. St. Louis 14, Tulsa nothing. If you're just joining us, welcome to a terrific Sunday of SFL action. Second down and 11 now from the 19. They'll go with the a similar formation. With the I formation and one to the right. Robinson the snap. Hands to Hawkins up the middle. Contact and goes down back at the original line of scrimmage right at the 20-yard line. It's hard sledding right now 
through the middle for Tulsa. As I attempted to say earlier, the front seven for St. Louis is no joke. Manny Eisenhower is one of the better defensive tackles in this league, so. Well, they'll spread it out wide. Five wide, three to the right, two to the left on third down and ten. Robinson alone in the backfield. He takes the snap, drops back, plenty of time, throws deep over the middle, has one-on-one -on -one coverage, and the ball hits the turf. Great coverage out there by Nick Daggs. The strong safety coming over to tip the ball away, and it's going to be fourth down and ten. They're just in front of the receivers, not letting anyone have any space to breathe at all out there. So after all of that nonsense with the, the fumble and not a fumble in the punt, Tulsa's going to get the ball back. Uh, sorry, St. Louis is going to get the ball back with about two minutes to go in the first quarter. As Billy Perry is standing on his own five-yard line. Kick is away cleanly. Let's see where it's caught by Peltier. Just shy of the 45, and Peltier brings it back up to the 47-yard line, and that is where St. Louis will start their next possession. I feel like every possession St. Louis has has to be a score just to make sure that they keep going for the throat of Tulsa. Both of these teams lost last week. Looking to get back in the win column with two weeks to go in the regular season. Three receivers right side, one to the left. A seal, short over the middle. That pass is complete to Tito Moss, the backup wide receiver. And he gets four yards out of it and second down coming up. Heavy set on second down. Nobody out wide. One in the backfield. That would be Diaz behind a seal. And he's going to get the ball. Diaz off the left side and nowhere to go. That was a run all the way, and the defense read it perfectly. Starting to get a little predictable against uh, St. Louis. They're going to have to start going back to what they were doing before and just start changing it up every play. That was the first tackle of the game by Kyler Murray. He had four tackles last week. Same formation, but this time they'll throw. Third down and eight, short check down, and that's tipped and incomplete. It was intended for Denzel Diaz out of the backfield and nothing doing. So it's going to be fourth down and eight right at midfield. All right, I feel they can afford a couple of these, but not too many. Because at any time, Tulsa's offense could wake up. Remember how dynamic they were early in the season when they rattled off you know, a lot of victories at the beginning of the year. First punt of the game, or sorry, second punt of the game for Jack Kissinger. He gets the punt away from just shy of his own 40-yard line. It's going to bounce inside the 10, inside the 5. Is it going to sit there? No. It's going to just cross the goal line and out to the 20. Go the Desperados. I feel like I see this every week. With, you know, it doesn't matter what team. I just feel like the special teams unit needs to just just need to get pumped up a little more because the Gunners just don't run for these things anymore, it seems. First down and 10, 20-yard line, 41 seconds to go first quarter. Two to the right, one to the left, two in the backfield. Robinson short drop throws over the middle. That's a great slot pass and a first down pickup of 12 yards. It's Corey Jones, his second catch of the game. And and this is this is what St. Louis has to worry about because once once Sir Charles Robinson gets his, his mojo back like he did on this class, look at this release. So quick. No one saw it coming. First down and 10 after the 12-yard pickup by Jones. Clock running down under 20 seconds to go, first quarter. St. Louis 14, Tulsa nothing, but Tulsa's got the ball. Three receivers right, one to the left. And a check down to, um, excuse me, to Hawkins out of the backfield goes for two yards, eventually wrapped up and dropped by a couple of defenders, including Haskins, the non-contract safety. And that's the end of the first quarter. 14 nothing gladiators over the Desperados. Who saw this coming? 
I certainly didn't. It's going to be a fantastic game this afternoon. Stay with us. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Three receivers right, one to the left on second down at eight. From the Tulsa 35, up the middle goes Hawkins, and he picks up a first down up to the 43-yard line. Swimming through tacklers like a shark. And, and here's the beast awakening. He knows what time it is. Look at this. It's going to, be, it's going to happen. It's going to happen soon. I believe it. I would not... Uh, doubt that uh, Hawkins will break a big one in this game. So we got to be ready for it. Two receivers left, none to the right on first down and ten. Deep drop and a throw over the middle. Oh, what a hit! The catch was made by Luis Latore, the tight end, and then he got laid out by the safety coming up to make the tackle. He did not make the first down. That was uh, Nick Daggs who made the tackle on that one. It'll be second down and just a whisker away. Just over 10 minutes to go, second quarter. Short drop for Robinson over the middle. That pass is complete to the 40, 35, and down to the 33-yard line. Second straight catch for Latore. Doesn't seem phased by the monster hit he took on the last play, and he steps up and gets another first down for the Desperados. Well, more, of a, more of a quiet professional he is. He doesn't... Doesn't like just exude flashiness, but what he does exude is a low lot of mental toughness and fortitude. This is the most efficient drive for Tulsa so far. This is the deepest they've gone into St. Louis territory in the game. First down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Hand up, Hawkins up the middle. Spin move doesn't get by the tackle of Arrington, who makes his first major uh, inclusion into the game. And it's going to be second down and six after the gain of four. Second down and six. Two in the backfield, two to the left, one to the right. Only three down linemen, but Hawkins is still dropped right at the line of scrimmage. He's not going anywhere. Great tackle fight by Kilroy Kalua, the linebacker, and it's third down. It's also trying to get to that red zone. They got to get six yards. To get the first down from the 29. Offset eye on third down. A delayed handoff to Hawkins. And Hawkins almost comes through with a clutch, but he's just short. Big clutch tackle by Bonoles. And oh boy, another. It's a fourth down and one. And what do you think they do here? I saw the punter just now, so that's probably what they're doing. No, the offense is on the field. You were fooled, sir. Fourth down and one. Are they going to go for it or are they going to try and draw the offsides here? It looks like they may just try and draw the offsides. Clock running down eight, seven, six, five, and they will just burn the timeout and draw the offside. But this is the one thing, and I say it every week, that really I don't understand. Uh, this strategy you're in field goal range why line up to try and go for it and just try to jump them offside and burn the timeout I've only seen it happen like twice in two seasons I, I think there was like once where it jumped in a game that we actually were a part of and I think that was the first game of the season but other than that I haven't ever seen it happen myself so why waste the time out when you're gonna kick the field goal anyway K. Joseph Carroll on to attempt the field goal. It was a little late getting out of there, but it is right down Main Street. Tulsa is on the board from 40 yards, and with 7.55 to go, it's Tulsa 3, St. Louis 14. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. It's also on the board now, and... You can find out about how the other games are going on in the league right now via the Score Stream app. Android and iOS available. Download it today and have the SFL at your fingertips. 
Freeman Peltier from inside his own five-yard line gets up to the 21-yard line before he's brought down by a couple of white jerseys, and that is where St. Louis will begin their next drive, trying to hold on to this 14-3 lead. I feel like considering the timeout that was burned, they may want to uh, try to play the time possession game just to put Tulsa in the crunch there. We've got some score updates from the other games going on right now. We'll get you to those in a moment. But first down and 10. A seal back to pass. Checks down to Diaz. Diaz drags a defender, then breaks free, and then is finally wrestled down by Espen Real, the linebacker. First time we've called his name this afternoon after a gain of four yards. Let's get you some score updates from around the league. Second quarter, Dallas 10, Vancouver 7. A battle there. A battle there to stay alive in the playoff race for Vancouver. Carolina 14, London 3 in the second quarter, and then obviously there's our game, which mirrors that score. Second down and six. A seal handoff to the fullback up the middle. And that is Chucky Steck, one of my favorite names in the league. is going on the all-name team. Good friend Alvin Washington likes to say. And it's third down and three as he picks up three yards. You know what name I miss? I miss a uh, certain Jaquinarius Dominatorix. Oh, what? no, I don't at all as a broadcaster. <laughs> Back to pass, near side throw, and it's going to be out of bounds. The pass was actually complete to Scott, but he could not bring the feed in bounds, and it's going to be fourth down and three as the offense trudges off the field, and Tulsa's going to get another chance to put some points on the board before the break. After that red-hot start by the Gladiators, it's been three punts in four drives as Kissinger is out again. As his punt gets away from the 15-yard line, fair catch called for by Charles Ball at the 38, and that is where the Desperados will start their next drive. A little bit slow now. The game has just calmed down a bit from the rocking start we had earlier. Let's see if Tulsa can pick up the tempo again. First down from the 38. Robinson back to pass those far side. Has a man out there and it's dropped. It was def either deflected or dropped. If it was deflected, that was Colin Douglas on the coverage. I couldn't get a good sight line at that, but I just feel like he just went for the ball all kinds of wrong. I will call that a drop. Yeah, it looked like the receiver was kind of falling down as he attempted to make the catch and just couldn't get a beat on the ball. I formation, second down and 10 from the Tulsa 38-yard line. Robinson to throw. Robinson pressure coming. He gets it out to, oh, no, he gets it out to Hawkins, but he loses a yard. As he falls behind the burst, the uh, sorry, the the stick. Oh no! Deion Hawkins has not had the best day so far. So now on third down and eleven, you gotta spread it out. Three left, two to the right. Empty backfield for Robinson. Robinson back to pass against the three-man front, and he's still going to go down. It's not going to be a sack because he got the ball away. But, oh, boy, Scott LaRue broke through three against five and took down Robinson, and it's going to be fourth down and 11. This is the sort of thing I was talking about earlier. I've made an allusion before, uh, to it before, but St. Louis has a very good front seven. We are seeing it in spades. Today, so far, as they've held Tulsa to three points here in the first half and only burned less than a minute on that drive. Punt is away from Billy Perry. Peltier, just shy of his own 25, makes a man miss, gets up to the 30, and officially the 31-yard line is where he will be stopped by the, by the kick coverage team. APM Music, Production Music Library, and Custom Music House for all your streaming needs is the official soundtrack of the SFL for eSports licensing. Email eSports at apmmusic.com. 
First down and set up coming for the Gladiators. Offset eye with two to the right. A seal changes the play at the line. A lot of white jerseys in the box. A seal will throw on first down. Long drop. Fires it out there. Oh, it's picked off. What an interception that is. Wow. Nate Heslep just went beast mode and climbed a 10-story building to bring that one down. And they started to go into the cover three now to adjust for the middle. And that man looked like he was playing a different sport. That was a basketball-ass jump. Wow there. So now, Tulsa has the ball again. Team, neither team wants to keep the ball here. First down and 10. Tulsa 44 going left to right across your radio dial. Robinson, time to throw. Goes down the middle into double coverage and it's caught. Down to the 31-yard line of St. Louis. Wow. Big catch. That's Luis La Torre again. Let's look at the precision on this throw. Let's look at it. It is a needle. He needed to put that exactly where he put it. Now, whether that was the best throw to make, I can't say. But it got there. It got there, and it got him about 30 yards. First down and 10 for Tulsa. Heavy set, one receiver each side. But a throw up coming, and across the middle it goes. That pass is completed down for seven yards before... Uh, Sanzo Robinson is finally brought down. I think that's, by my count, his first catch of the game. Oh. 85 yards and an interception so far for Robinson. Not a banner game of his yet by any stretch of the imagination, but we are still in the first half. Five minutes to go and counting. Second down and three from the 24-yard line, up the middle, Hawkins. Hawkins makes one man miss, had two with the spin move, and he picks up a first down up into the SFL presented by APM Music Red Zone for the first time today at the 20-yard line. I feel like the Desperados have now just broken out of the jail cell and they're going to be firing on all cylinders from here on. They've been playing with some tempo too. First down and 10 from the 20, handoff, Hawkins, nowhere to go as he stood up by a wall of green jerseys right at the line of scrimmage. That'll be second down and 10, a wall led by Scott LaRue. What kind of a mask is that? Scott LaRue has got the double-tiered face mask on right there. He means business. High formation on second down with a receiver each side. Another hand off to Hawkins, and he's going to be dragged down from behind right at the line of scrimmage again. Two runs to the left side with Hawkins, and nothing doing. This time, Kilroy Kalua makes his second big tackle of the quarter. Well, to speak of equipment anomalies, I've seen people, I've seen players use the uh, the old time kicker and punter ones too. Sometimes I'm like, why? Five wide on third and ten from just shy of the. Uh, St. Louis 20-yard line. Robinson back to pass. Plenty of time to do so. Comes to your side. That pass is complete. Five and out of bounds at the three-yard line. Sanzo Robinson wins the 1v1 against Arrington. Now, this is the matchup we've been looking to see here. I know he's pinpointed here. He's pinpointed because he got burned there. Great little post move, uh, sorry, corner move. And Robinson's going to be out on the sidelines for this play. First down and goal from the three-yard line. A perfect chance to get back in this game for Tulsa. Nobody out wide, and one in the backfield, that'll be Hawkins. Hawkins gets the ball, and he'll be stood up, and he'll not, he won't lose the yard, but he'll just barely get back to the line of scrimmage. Aiden, Friday on the tackle. Now, if you're St. Louis, you really got to try and hold them to three here because your offense has sputtered a little bit at the end of this first half. Second down and goal from the three. Handoff. Hawkins. He'll rumble into the end zone for the score. Put it on the board. Tulsa has their first touchdown of the game. And in pending the extra point, it could be 10 to 14. Don't look now, but I believe Tulsa's on the come up, boys. They got 
10 points in, well, nine points so far in this half. Beautiful move to get around Dad. A little stutter step to the right. And nobody's, and nobody's going to touch him. So for the first extra point of the game, K. Joseph Carroll, the kicker for Tulsa, is on the field. St. Louis scored two touchdowns in, I think, about four plays in their opening two possessions. And after that, the offense has looked a little bit suspect. Levant, what do you think the Gladiators need to do to get the offense taken again? I feel like they just need to go back to what they were dialing up earlier and just try to go over the top and not be afraid of the secondary. Well, when they did that, they got picked off. And they can't do that either. <laughs> Carroll ready to kick it away from the 30-yard line. Peltier back to receive. You Peltier see. takes it from his own 5-yard line up to the 10, 15, 20, running left side, spin move, flag comes down. He gets up to unofficially the 30-yard line, but let's see what the flag is. And it's going to be holding on the Gladiators, and it's going to set them back. That is not what you need right now. Domino Fats, the guard, playing special teams, called for the hold. And instead of the 30-yard line, the Gladiators will start back at the 15, or the 18. Only three down linemen for the Gladiators. Three receivers in total for, sorry, the Gladiators. Deep pass on first down, tipped and incomplete. Good defensive work there by Heslep. That pass was intended for Swain. It's one of those plays where I say if it had a little more loft, a little more belief, a little more salsa, it would probably get there. Second down and 10 from the 18-yard line. They'll go two to the right and the tight end on the left with two in the backfield. Hand off to Diaz. Oh, no. The offensive line went out to lunch, left him out to dry, and Denzel Diaz loses three yards. Uh, I, I definitely saw a be-back later sign. They need to be back now. Third down and 13. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half. This will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Pass play from the seal covered up. He's got pressure in his face. He gets the pass away, and it's incomplete. As Brown, that's uh, Griffin Brown, the defensive tackle, was out there, and he ran enough interference where the receiver couldn't bring the ball in. And I was wrong. It was not the last play before the two-minute warning. We're going to get the punt away from Kissinger. He's going to be standing back deep in the shadow of his own end zone, back practically on the goal line. What do you think? Does Tulsa bring the house here? I think they do. No, they're not. They're going to play coverage. It's a fair catch right at the 50-yard line, and they're even going to give him in St. Louis territory. That's the two-minute warning. St. Louis 14. The Tulsa Desperados are storming back. They've got 10. 156 to go. First half. This is the SFL presented by APN Music on YouTube. Stay with us. From just inside St. Louis territory, Tulsa starts first down and 10 from the 49. Hand off, Hawkins up the middle, and he breaks free. Oh, wow, he found the hole, and he got him 12 yards. Deion Hawkins had a bit of a slow start to the game, but now he's heating up. He's had a couple of 10-plus yard runs. And they've really relied on him so far to be the workhorse with Robinson not having the best of games, but this time they'll go empty set on first and ten. Three to the right, one to the left. Robinson to throw. Oh, he goes down! First sack of the game comes from the Gladiators' front line. Chad Longstreet, the defensive end, got in there and brought down Robinson. And it's going to be second down and 16. They'll rush to the line, though. Same formation, five wide. Quick snap to Robinson. Robinson under pressure again. This time he gets the ball out there, and it's tipped. And incomplete. 
good defensive work out there from Freeman Peltier. So looking at it again, the pressure and then swarming to the ball is the, almost the entire secondary of St. Louis. They've been, when they've been on it, they've been all over the ball. I think that's the big problem that St. Louis has had all season long. They've had they've had good moments. They just haven't really been consistent, and they've lost a lot of close games. But they are still in with an outside shot to make the playoffs, but they got to win their last two games and have other results go their way. One minute to go in the first half. Hawkins gets the ball off the right side. Spin move is going to get him four yards, and the second timeout of the half burned by Tulsa. They might look to take a shot at the end zone. Here. And here comes when the timeout that they used out earlier comes into effect here. They would have really have loved having all three. I think they're just outside of field goal range here. So what are they going to do on fourth down and 12? The offense is on the field. It's not a Hail Mary set, just a five wide. Look like they're going to play towards the sticks. Robinson. Oh, he goes down. Nobody was open in the second sack of the, of the downs. Comes courtesy of 70, Manny Eisenhower. He had a big tackle on Hawkins earlier, and now he gets a sack. Well, they're stringing up just enough of the good moments to get them out of bad situations, and there it is again. And that was a fourth down attempt, so St. Louis gets the ball back. Three timeouts, 52 seconds to go. They're on their own 46-yard line. Two receivers left, one to the right. Diaz stands in shotgun between two possible runners. A seal to throw. Goes out to the far side. Beautiful corner route run by Finch. He'll get five yards and step out of bounds at midfield. 49 seconds to go. As you said a little earlier, the doing just enough to hold on to this lead in large part to their defense who has played very well today now they're going to go trips formation trips to the right one to the left on second down and five with 49 seconds to go in the first half a seal short drop quick throw comes to the right side catch at a first down and out of bounds the triple threat from elijah swaim and it's going to be first down and 10 for st louis and it stops the clock He's had a very, very productive day so far, and he's he's just providing a matchup nightmare for Tulsa right now. And this drive, St. Louis has gone a lot more to the in-between the sticks, pass plays, the little corners and slants, and it's been working out for him so far. Into Tulsa territory at the 44, on a run on first down from Diaz, goes nowhere and forces the first timeout out of the Gladiators. I did say mix it up. I didn't say do that when you. Uh, I don't. I don't get this sometimes. I don't know why you're running when there's 41 seconds left on the clock. But oh boy, they're going to continue with that trips to the right formation that's been working for them so far on this drive. Second down and ten from the Tulsa 43 yard line, and a sneak up the middle and five yards gained. <laughs> I'm speechless. A seal took it right up the gut. And the now up tempo on third and five catch, and they didn't get it. Oh man, Elijah Swaim couldn't turn it upfield, couldn't stick the ball over the first down marker, and it's fourth and one from the Tulsa 34. I I don't understand that route. Why don't you? Why do you not go past the sticks on third down? I I'm. Ugh, I am at a loss for words right now. It's going to be a long field goal coming out. 50-plus yards for Graham Northrup. He's perfect so far today. And he's not this time. Bangs it off the post. And St. Louis comes up empty with 25 seconds to go first half. And, and, and this, this here is the difference of probably the yard they would have had. Probably the exact yard they would have had. Had it just been a first down and not to the sticks.
just right. short. I think is it uh, the kick crashed off the the parallel bar. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> of the uh, of the upright. Now Tulsa's got the ball back. Twenty five seconds to go, but no timeouts. Robinson rifles it over the middle. That pass is complete. And down the sideline goes Sanzo Robinson. The Robinson to Robinson connection all the way up to the 31-yard line. They're in field goal range already with 20 seconds to go. Now it's time to get all aboard for the comeback train because it's coming. The connection has arrived and we are about to embark. One-handed catch by Sanzo out there and he was able to tiptoe down the sideline. Get all the way up. Down to the 31-yard line. 20 seconds to go. I formation, one receiver each side for Tulsa. With Charles Robinson under center. Charles to throw. To the far side, that pass is complete. And then pushed out of bounds after a gain of seven yards. I guess uh, that's Corey Jones. Now 16 seconds to go. They were able to stop the clock. They have no timeouts of their own, so they gotta gotta go all out to the to the sideline. They're gonna go heavy set three in the backfield with a receiver to the left on second down and three. But they're gonna throw, and it's a slant, a swing out pass, and Hawkins has got it at a spin move, gets him all the way. I'm oh, sorry, they did have a timeout, and they use it here. They're going to get inside the SFL presented by APM Music Red Zone up to the 15-yard line. Great play call as Zion Hawkins had all the space in the world to turn up field. Sometimes these short plays don't work, but when you have someone like Zion Hawkins, you know you're going to get greatness almost every time. Now they have 10 seconds from the 15-yard line. If they can put this one in the end so they'd take the lead, but they're just going to go for the three points. Borderline chip shot field goal on the way here from Joseph Carroll. And the kick is away, and it is right down Main Street from 31 yards. It's a one-point game with six seconds to go in the second half. My goodness. So while we have some time, let's take a look at the scores from the other games brought to you by ScoreStream. Dallas is up 13-7 on Vancouver. They've just started the third quarter. It's it's halftime in Carolina as the Skyhawks lead the London Knights 21-6. And it's just about to be halftime in this game as it's 14-13. Peltier from his own goal line will bring it out. 10, 15, 20. Spin move gets him up to the 25 and officially spotted at the 24-yard line with two seconds to go. They might just run it up the middle or kneel it and take the lead into the half. I mean, I surely wouldn't risk anything else here. Now they're set up in a passing formation, this trips formation, this time to the left and one to the right. And they're going to throw. Time has run out in the quarter. It's going to be a slant, and that was basically fulfilled the same Purpose as a deal, just got a little bit more stats for Nick Finch, who made the catch. That's the end of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. It's 14 to 13, St. Louis on top of Tulsa. The Gladiators have got to win to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. We'll see you after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Budweiser Stadium here in St. Louis, Missouri. Second half just about to kick off. The Gladiators lead the Tulsa Desperados 14 to 13 in a do or die game for the Glad's playoff chances. Tulsa will get the ball to begin the second half. My name is Michael Trevillo. I'm your play by play commentator. I'm joined in the booth today by Levant Mercer. Levant, thoughts on the first half? Well, it was really uh, a. It, it was quite something. St. Louis's points have come basically off two plays and two possessions, and after that, they've slowed down, and Tulsa has awakened slowly but surely, creeping back up into this game. Charles Ball on the return takes it up to the 27-yard line of Tulsa. That's where they will begin. Sir Charles Robinson leading that offense back out onto the field, wearing all white with red and green highlights going right to left across your radio dial. First play is a run to Hawkins off the right side, and he'll fall forward for one yard. The most interesting stat I saw at halftime was the fact that St. Louis is in the lead 14-13. to 13. St. Louis has two more total yards of offense than them, uh, 201 to 203. But yet Tulsa has over double time of possession. I formation on second down. Hawkins gets it again. Tries to fight through the first level of defense. Does so. But the linebacker core knocks him down after a gain of three. And it'll be third down and six. Usually what I would say would be, well, if you have all this time of possession, what are you doing with it? Well, they actually have been. So they've been scoring. They've been making plays. Third down and six. Robinson. All oh, pressure coming. He's got two defenders on him, and he's going to go down. Third sack of the game for the Gladiators. This one coming through Aiden Friday on the linebacker blitz. And they're just going to keep needing their front seven to continue to put a applied pressure on Robinson. There's Look at this. There was no getting away from that. You're sandwiched there. And give a half sack as well to Aaron Arrington, who came up from on the corner blitz as well. So it was a double blitz and forces a punt out of Tulsa on their first possession. Billy Perry standing at his own seven-yard line, looking to kick this one away. It's going to be decent field position for St. Louis on their first drive of the half. Kick is away from the 10-yard line. Peltier back to receive. He'll take it at the 40 and gets up near midfield. In fact, he'll be spotted right at midfield after he is tackled by Junior Stanley. St. Louis started the game with two quick scores on two quick possessions, but after that they've looked just a little lifeless. What do you think they need to do to come back to life here in the second half? I know this is going to sound weird, but they're probably going to have to start taking, they're just going to have to start playing the time game. They're going to have to get Diaz involved in the offensive swing a little more. First down, a seal, goes to the far side, one-on-one -on -one coverage, catch is made out there, and then going out of bounds is Cody, uh, no, no, sorry, excuse me, that's Nick Finch out there, a nine-yard gain, second down and one upcoming. Plays like that will work, too. Yeah, in the, in the um, drive that St. Louis had right before the end of the half, where they ended up missing a field goal, I thought that was the best game plan on a drive that they put together all game. These short out route passes, but here's a run up the middle from Diaz! And he gets cut down behind the line, lost a yard. As Chiron Hill came up from the linebacker spot and made the tackle. Third, third down and two upcoming from the Tulsa 42-yard line. A seal in the gun, two to the right, none to the left. Plenty of time to throw, throws that into the near side, and that pass is caught by Nick Finch, who makes up for his earlier blunder, and gets a first down to the Tulsa 39-yard line. That's the same play we saw a couple of times in the first half. That's the first time uh, that play has worked well, and so it's got a first down. The rest of the times, they've been just a little bit short, and they need to... I think it's all about receiver route running and knowing where the, the sticks are 
On first down and ten, here's a seal. Plenty of time to throw, but he'll check it down to Diaz. Tries to get away from the first defender and ends up getting one yard. Well, that right there was just wonderful coverage by Tulsa. They're like when you have everyone covered, doesn't matter how much time you have. Sometimes you're just gonna be forced to check it down. Second down and nine. Two receivers right, one to the left, and two in the backfield. For St. Louis, a seal looking, throwing to the first down marker and more. Caught made by Finch. First down moves the chains again up to the Tulsa 27-yard line. I just say it's been making a, good, uh, a great contribution on this drive and throughout the game. First down and 10. St. Louis in all green, white numbers, gold helmets going left to right. And on first down and 10 for the 27, uh, Seal forced to run. He avoids a sack and takes up. He's got a first down and more up to the 15-yard line. And he's finally tackled by a host of white jerseys. Dylan, a Seal, are you kidding me? What was that? Well, from uh, what I've understood is uh, when they brought him in, they knew he was a mobile quarterback. But... And and they just wanted they just wanted to implement him more in the offense and sometimes you get to see that happen. That was one of the most impressive solo quarterback plays I've seen this season. A seal to the far side. That pass is complete for a five yard gain, and Cody Scott will get out of bounds at the nine yard line. This all taking place in the SFL presented by APA Music Red Zone. We have score updates for you via the score stream app. I'll get to those right after this drive finishes up. Second down and five. Two to the right, none to the left. Two in the backfield and a seal of the shotgun. A seal changes the play. Now takes the snap, looks to throw. Throws near side to the first down marker. And a first down catch is made and falling out of bounds. Nick Finch has come up clutch on this drive. That's his fourth catch. See, they started to do those plays again, but they've started to change what down they call it on. Changing it up, keeping the defense on their toes. First down and goal from the five. Trips to the right, one to the left. And a lone Diaz in the backfield. A sneak coming up from the seal and he scores! Put it on the board, Dylan Asil. Quarterback sneak touchdown. I'm like, they trust him with the ball. They've the past couple weeks, they've given him the rock to run, and he's getting gaining more and more confidence with running it. I wouldn't be surprised if I start seeing the pistol or wildcat from St. Louis at some point with him in the helm. It reminds me last season of when Dallas tried to go with the whole mobile quarterback thing with uh, some bad synergy, and it didn't quite work out, but. They're work, making it work here in St. Louis today. Extra point attempt on the way from Northrop. That splits the uprights, and it's 21-13 to 13 St. Louis Gladiators over the Tulsa Desperados with 6-11 left to play third quarter. This is the SFL presented by APM Music. Stay with us. And that is the kind of drive you really needed to see out of St. Louis. And I'm going to get to the rest of my thought after these score updates presented by score stream third quarter carolina over london 21 to 9 and dallas continues to lead vancouver in the third quarter 16 to 7. charles ball on the return tries to get away from a tackler gets up to the 29 yard line before he's brought down by about four green jerseys and to continue my thought from earlier in the first half aside from that one drive that ended in a missed field goal St. Louis really never had a drive of more than five or six plays, and they really needed to establish some tempo on offense. It was the perfect way to do it, and let's see if Tulsa can respond right now. First down and 10 from the 29, just over six minutes to go in the third. Robinson checks down to Hawkins. Hawkins makes a man miss and gets seven yards on first down up to the 37. And that goes back to what you said earlier, Levant, about how St. Louis is going to win this game and they need to focus on the time of possession. 
Yeah, because at this point, at this point, now that they're... Then they needed to score, by the way. But at this point in the game, this is what they're going to have to do. I'll get back to you. Offset eye here. on second down and three. Robinson to throw. Throws deep over the middle. And a pass is tipped and incomplete. Great play. Colin Douglas read it all the way and knocked the pass down. Third down and three. To continue what I was on about earlier, it's because... As you can see, with plays like what Douglas did there, you can indeed trust your defense, but you can't have them out there too much. So you have to give them the opportunity to refresh themselves. Third down and three coming up for Tulsa. Two to the right, one to the left, offset eye. Robinson to throw. He rolls right, throws over the middle, and he's got him in wide. And yards after catch as well, all the way down to the St. Louis 49-yard line. Sanzo Robinson. Picking up some big yards. <clears throat> and some plays you would say the coverage is busted. Other times you would just call a bad play. And in this case, St. Louis just matched up real wrong and left one man way too open in the zone. Where was everyone? If, if you're going to leave one man open, I don't think you want to leave SFL almost legend at this point, Sanzo Robinson, out alone. First down and Ted. Now into St. Louis territory at the 39-yard line. Robinson back to pass. Plenty of time to do so. And now he's got a scramble, and he goes down! Unbelievable Chad Longstreet with the he-knows-it's-much madness. He's got the basketball celebration going on. Picks up his second sack of the game. And How does he get to Robinson there? Well, as we see there, he finessed his way. Look at the swim move. Look at the ball rush. Got through, and what? And let's mind that the replay didn't uh, show that he broke through one other person on that play. It was just great. Second down and 17 now, all the way back almost at midfield. Robinson short drop over the middle. That pass is almost intercepted by Friday, who looked, or sorry, by LaRue, who looked at, like he was so surprised he got the ball in his hands, he just dropped it. I'm still surprised that a non-contract player in Longstreet did all of that to get to the quarterback. I, 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 I got to give it up to him. We've seen it all season. The non-contract players have have shown up time and again for every team this season. And they, they should not be discounted. Third down, 17. Five wide set. Robinson back to pass. Steps up, launches one. It's caught! First down inside the tw 35, 20, 22 yard line. Great catch, and you talk about non contract players. That's Marcel Miller out there making a great catch. Look at this throw. Look at this tight spiral. And right where only the receiver can grab it. That, you can't coach that. You really can't. That's a great route run. And Freeman Peltier was the man on the coverage. Couldn't bring down Miller. First down and 10 for the Tulsa Desperados at the 22-yard line. Offset eye. Hand off Hawkins right side. And there's nowhere to go. Fantastic solo tackle made by Aaron Arrington. Loss of two yards. I know what you said earlier that uh, th these two wouldn't be paired up much because of one has to stick the receiver more, but Arrington has two tackles on Hawkins. Both of them for significant yard loss. So it's been a good matchup at St. Louis for St. Louis so far. Robinson on second down and 12. Check down to Hawkins, and Hawkins won't get past the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 12. As we see the quarterback comparisons on your screen now, Charles Robinson's got 202 yards. A seal only 174. But a seal's got a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown in this game. Third down and 12. Second, third down, and really long in a row for Tulsa. Can they convert two in a row? One on one coverage, and they got it! First down and goal at the nine. Who else? Sanzo Robinson picking up a huge chunk of yardage and another first down. Not only that, but you got to watch the toe drag swag. Let's look at it again. Look at it. He knew, oh, well, well, yeah, he knew where he was. No challenge by St. Louis yet on the 
ball inbounds. Robinson's going to go to the bench to take a breather. First down and goal. Last time Tulsa was here, they got uh, they got uh, six points. Heavy set, no receivers. Hand off up the middle. Hawkins nowhere to go. And he'll get no yards. Aiden Friday made the tackle. And St. Louis has got to try and hold Tulsa to three here. Because the Desperados have played some fast offense. And when that train has gotten rolling, there's not much in this league that can stop it. Hand off. Hawkins makes a man miss with a swim move and gets up to the three-yard line. Six-yard gain, third down and goal. And if Tulsa ends up scoring a touchdown on this drive, remember they've had they had a third down and 17 and a third down and 12, both converted on this drive. And it all comes down to this third down and goal from the three-yard line. Offset eye with three receivers, two to the right, one to the left, handoff, Hawkins, touchdown! Put it on the board, simple as you like. He wasn't even touched. Here, look at it again. Just wonderful blocks all around, and look at the vision. So, Dion Hawkins now has two red zone touchdowns today. He is the main reason, offensively, why the Desperados are still in it, although Sir Charles Robinson is making the case. They're going for two here. They're going to go for two. They're going to give it to Hawkins. And two points in a tie ball game with 1.43 to go in the third quarter. Around that two-point conversion there, he took two people there with him. Number 22, taking two people. Two one seconds. of them is Manny Eisenhower. All He's a two. big man. So we got a tie ball game now. Thank you to everyone watching is currently on YouTube, listening as well. We'll do a chat shout-out shortly. As Peltier takes it from the 5 up to the 20 and down to the 25. Let's do that chat shout out. Dwayne Schindler, Scott LaRue, Jason 1347, random stuff. And everybody else watching and listening to us right now, thank you so much for tuning in to the SFL on a Sunday afternoon. A beautiful. Sunday afternoon in St. Louis. Now the Gladiators have got to respond. This is the first time it's been tied since it was 0-0. Diaz on the draw. He'll get uh, four yards and be down at the 30-yard line. He's really got to find a way to get back into this game. I know it's a tie, but they can milk the clock themselves still, get a score on this drive, and leave it all up to Tulsa's also been playing a bit of a time game, so. Two receivers left, one to the right. And a seal in the shotgun. A seal back to pass on second and six. Goes over the middle. That's a great crossing pattern. And a first down all the way up towards midfield to the 46-yard line. Nick Finch has been the hot hand for the Gladiators right now. And he gets... Now here, here's the throw over the middle that... Uh, a couple plays that they've been I mean a couple areas on the field they haven't been targeting recently that we know Tulsa has issues with and going back to it should be what they need to be doing offset eye behind it under setter Gillen a seal one receiver each side first down and 10 for the 46 yard line a seal back to pass with the short drop now just flares it out over the uh, to the far side for Trucky Steck, the fullback. He'll get two yards, and he won't go out of bounds. Clock's still running. 20 seconds to go in the third quarter, and maybe they'll get one more playoff. Right. Ten seconds to go. They don't need to run a play if they don't want to. Four, three, two, and they will want to play. It's a draw to Diaz. Up the middle, and a spin move doesn't get him the first down, but it does get him uh, five yards up to the 45-yard line. The clock hits triple zeros on the third quarter. Put your fours up. It's going to be a good one. 
Tulsa 21, St. Louis 21, 11 minutes to go. This is the SFL presented by APM Music on YouTube. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere, this is the real March Madness. Third down and two. Big play here for the Gladiators. Just inside Tulsa territory at the 45-yard line. Now going right to left. Pitch play. Diaz. Spin move. He didn't get there. Great tackle by Kyler Murray. And it's going to be fourth down and two. As he tried to run around the outside of the uh, front line. But Kyler Murray saw what was happening all the way. And came up and made the tackle. So it's a tail of two run plays. I like the draw on third. I don't like what they did on fourth. We say I see it every week. Stretch plays hardly work. And the the pitch as well is the worst type of of stretch because it allows the defense to set up on you, and it's hard to do. It's hard to get any yards forward as Charles Ball takes a fair catch at the 11 yard line. Tulsa now with a chance to take the lead, 10 minutes, 20 to go in the ball game. Let's have an out of town score update presented by the score stream app. Download it for the iOS and Android store and follow all the SFL action at your fingertips. Carolina leads London in the fourth quarter, 28 to 12. And in the fourth quarter as well, Dallas leads Vancouver 16 to 10. First down, Robinson at the five yard line. He's dragged down from behind. Another sack for the Gladiator defense. And these are the sort of things that keep them alive in the game. It's Longstreet again. That's a hat trick of sacks for Longstreet. Someone signed that, man. Oh, here we go. Down the seam. And no. Corey Jones was out there and he couldn't bring it in. If he had brought that in, he had the speed to go all the way. But it's going to be third down and 12. We got to breathe out after that one. Third down and 12. Tulsa at their own 10 yard line of the shadow of their own end zone. Trips to the right, uh, trips to the left, one to the right. Robinson, deep drop, standing at his own goal line, throws it out towards the sticks, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Corey Jones again. It was a defender running interference, and he couldn't see the pass coming his way. It hits the turf, and it's fourth down and ten. The punt's going to come from Billy Perry from his own end zone, and St. Louis is going to get some great field position off of their defense. It, it's not often you see uh, Sir Charles Robinson with that sort of happy feet, but he's been hit all day real hard. He's been sacked four times, three of them by, uh, five times now, three of them by Longstreet. He's also been hurried a bunch and been hit as he throw, hit as he's thrown twice. Peltier takes the return up to the Tulsa 40-yard line, and they're going to have great field position to try and get the lead back. 9.39 to go, fourth quarter. St. Louis 21, Tulsa 21. The Gladiators have the ball. So here's where SCL's got to make his money. He could very much help win them the game. Here, control time and score. In the gun on first down, a seal takes the low step, throws it over the middle into one-on-one -on -one cover. Post picked off. Oh, man. Hayward Palmer, the non-contract quarterback, was out there, and he almost got on the end of that tip. It was a very low snap. He had to dig it out of the ground the pass was pretty good but it was into double coverage and it was tipped straight up into the air and almost brought down by Palmer. like i was attempting to say he doesn't need to get it all at once and there he goes i mean that could have been 50 50 actually looking at that angle there but wow that was a game of hot potato i wouldn't want to risk i see former st louis gladiator James Richards in the chat and my former partner up here in the broadcast booth. How you doing, James? First, second down and 10 for St. Louis from the Tulsa 40. Heavy set. They're going to throw out of it. And pressure coming. seal has got to get the ball away. He checks it down to Diaz. And Diaz loses three more yards. St. Louis is continually shooting themselves in the foot here. That's a formation you don't expect to see on second down and 10. Or any, or any down and 10. 
But they're going to go I formation here, third down and 13. They can get into field goal range if they don't get a first down, but they got to get some significant yards. A seal, rifles, over the middle. Oh, wide open behind defense. Cody Scott down to the 20-yard line. If only there was a way to get the ball to Scott without him sliding, but it got to where it needed to go. I mean, it's still a big Ooh. play. Did he if drop that? Uh, it looks like he dropped that. Hmm. No challenge yet from Tulsa, but it looked like that ball hit the ground. Now that I actually got to see it, it did really touch the ground. St. Louis is rushing up to the line to try and get this playoff. They know. They know. Oh man, you got to go. off to Diaz, and Diaz is going to get back to the line of scrimmage and push forward for one more yard. And now they can't challenge. Huh? Yeah. It, 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 I don't know what Tulsa wasn't looking at or what they were trying to. They, I mean, St. Louis gave them at least three, four seconds there to, like, throw the flag. And I don't know what the... I, I don't know. Cody Scott will get credit for the reception. He's got five today. Trips to the right, one to the left, and one in the backfield on second down and nine. Another sneak by a seal in this time. They're all over it. If St. Louis finds a way to get us, up, like... Go up another seven here. We're going to be remembering that pass play. But it's going to be a uh, third down and nine. they got to get inside the team. Already in the SFL presented by a red zone at the 19. One receiver each side and a, and a tight end each side as well. A seal hit as he throws. Oh, did I know oh, it's caught? Tipped and caught by Finch inside the five, down to the two-yard line. The Gladiators are in business again. And that's the game of hot potato you want to win. Unbelievable concentration by Nick Finch. <laughs> the original intended target was uh, Cody Scott. And he tipped it, and it was caught by Finch. And now Diaz up the middle trying to get there. No. He didn't get there. Clock running down towards seven minutes to go. Second down and goal from the three upcoming. This is a very precarious red zone situation for Seal. Because this secondary can take it 100 plus yards right. to the house if he throws a duck. Unbelievable. This drive has balanced on the razor's edge the entire way. Another heavy set. Here's Diaz off the right side pushing for the pop. He's not going to get there. Again, he's not going to get any yards at all. He's only got 59 this game on 13 carries, and one of those was a 50-yard touchdown run. So this he's only gotten nine yards since the first play from scrimmage. This is going to sound wild, but either they're going to have to trust a seal to run it, or they're going to have to like just throw it in the end zone. Well, they're going to throw it. Two receivers each side on third down and goal to the back of the end zone. Incomplete. It was intended for Swaim, and it was tipped away by Charles Ball, who had excellent coverage out there. Uh, we're just look at the no, play again. No, that was not I Charles mean, Ball. Excuse me, that was Jeffrey Desir. I mean, looking at it again, there really wasn't anyone he could. Well, maybe Finch. Maybe he should have probably went for Finch there, but well, you know, yeah. I'm here my, my, and he's there. My perfect call on that play would have been a. If you're, if you're really going to pass it, I would have said uh, a short curl and have everybody stop right at the goal line. I mean, yeah, in that case, it's just really, it's just what your matchup is. It's just really, okay, I, as soon as I turn, you throw to me. Graham Northrup for the chip shot field goal is right down Main Street. St. Louis takes the lead, 24 to 20, 6 minutes, 10 seconds to go. We've got another close game on our hands. Here in St. Louis today, if everybody in the chat grabbed one person that they know and asked them to come and watch the end of this game, it would be amazing because we're going to have an epic conclusion to this game. Graham Northrup kicking it off from his own 30-yard line. Charles Ball standing at his own 10 to receive. Up to the 20, 25, 30, running left side, spin move, and he'll just get to the 30-yard line before being driven backwards. It's the same old story for Tulsa again. Down points with the ball in the decent field position off a 
off a kickoff. And they've come up with the answers time and time and again to keep this game close. Can they do it again? I formation, one receiver each side on first down and 10. Robinson, handoff. Up the middle to Hawkins, and Hawkins gets a yard. And I think, Levant, you probably going to back me up on this. If this game is going to come down to a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside between a corner or safety for St. Louis and a wide receiver for Tulsa. That's, that's just my peering into the crystal ball. Second down and nine. Robinson over the middle. That pass is tipped at Anderson. Coming back the other way with it is St. Louis. The Gladiators got the ball back. Oh, my. Oh, Santa Maria, you actually made a prediction. Look at this by Colin Douglas. Look at it. Another game of hot potato. Tip, the original tip was by Nick Gags, who had great coverage on the receivers over the middle, and he just tapped it into the hands of Colin Douglas. And they can't believe it on the, on the Tulsa sidelines. Great field position of the Tulsa 35 for the Gladiators. A seal, back to pass. Pressure coming, he's got a spin. He throws it over the middle. Oh! That would have been a fantastic catch by Sheldon Morant, who was out there, the non-contract player who was out there for St. Louis. That was a, a back shoulder, back foot, falling down throw by a seal. And it almost worked. I cannot fault him for not seeing the other receiver on that play because he was doing the most to keep the play alive. The king of the scrambles. Still in a seal right now. Second down and 10 from the 35. Here's a hand up off the middle to Diaz. Diaz breaks through one tackle, but he's dragged down from behind after a gain of two. He's back up over 60 yards, but he only has 12 yards. I think I mentioned this right before the last drive. He only has 12 yards since the beginning of the game. Third down and eight. Big play coming up here for St. Louis. Two receivers left, one to the right. A seal has to move in the pocket, and this time he will not escape. Three white jerseys in the backfield brings him down all the way back at the Tulsa 43. Outside field goal range, Griffin Brown will get credit for the sack coming up from the defensive tackle spot. Although Kevin Grayson and Tiamani were also in the backfield. And this is huge for Tulsa. Because now momentum is at least even keel now. Now they get the ball back. And they can reset themselves and get going again. Tulsa has... The defense for the Desperados has kept them alive in the game. Ball is going to bounce to the final. Oh, wow! What fantastic punt coverage down at the five-yard line. Sheldon Morant who missed the catch earlier for the Gladiators, comes up big and downs the ball inside the five. That's the heart I want to see in a gunner. That's what I want to see. Now Tulsa in the shadow of their own end zone. Three receivers right, one to the left. Robinson stands at his own goal line. There's a long dollop pass out there to the near side. Nobody really in the area. Just way over through the go route i feel like if it went and gone any further that would have been intentional <laughs> <laughs> remember it's st louis 24 tulsa 21 four minutes 10 seconds to go the gladiators have to win to keep their slim playoff hopes alive second down and 10 robinson from his own end zone throws it over the middle that pass is completed the ball on the turf, and it's taken up by Silas. Aaron Arrington picks the ball off the turf as Freeman Pelcher knocked it away. What a name. Well, let's look at this. Did he have... No, I do not believe he had the ball long enough for that. Unreal. But, okay, we had this same play earlier, although it was the other way around. And it was overturned. 
Let's see what we've got. We're going to see the replay here. This was a rifle of a pass from Robinson. Ah. Oh, if it, and for a second there, I thought it might not have touched the ground. But it did definitely touch the ground. I don't think he had it in his hands. We'll see what the referee says. After review, the receiver did have possession. It is therefore yeah. And we're going to have an overturn of the call. Tulsa is just going to be an incomplete pass. He did not have control of the ball. That's the. S I have never seen that before, that play. And we've got it twice in one game. Wacky things happen in the SFL. Third down and 10 from the five yard line. Robinson, short drop, throws in a go route. Oh, it's in or incomplete. Freeman Peltier with the mammoth leap to knock the ball away. So earlier in the game, we had someone do a basketball leap, and that right there was reminiscent of baseball. We have all the sports here apparently, because that man dove for that ball. Now Peltier's got to get out to midfield. He is the return man for the Gladiators. This is the least likely position you want to find yourself in if you're a punter from the back of your own end zone. Where is Peltier going to field this? Just outside the 40-yard line. Spin move up to the 36. Fantastic field position for St. Louis. They're almost in field goal range already with a three-point lead. And this is a change of events now that St. Louis desperately needs. They need to go for the throat and score seven. Heavy set on first down, no, with no receivers. From the Tulsa 36, Tulsa brings the house. A run, a spin move, and another spin move. Three, four spin moves and a six-yard pickup by Diaz. Do we have a Guinness Book of World Records for most spin moves used in a play? <laughs> I don't know, but that that is very precarious there. You could have been spin cycling his way into a fumble if he kept going. He got six yards. He broke out of almost an impossible situation. They're going to keep the same heavy formation on second down. Let's see if Tulsa brings the house again. It looked like they... Here's the snap, and here comes the defense. They're going to run it off tackle and a space to run into for Diaz. He's got a first down up to the 20-yard line. Don't look now, but I think Diaz remembered where forward progress is. Look at this again. Look at the vision to see through and had the... Look, there was like a real small gap there, and he made it through. And if not for uh, Dan Fios, the guard, missing the block, that could have been six points. They'll stay with the heavy formation from the 20-yard line. Inside the SFL, presented by APM Music, Red Zone. Two minutes and tw 43 seconds to go. Diaz, the workhorse, and he's going to lose two yards this time. And somebody missed a block up front. And Gito Williams brings him down we get a chance to catch our breath here in the broadcast booth now a passing formation finally second down and 12 two to the right none to the left offset eye they're gonna lock let that clock wind all the way down to just before the two minute warning is another off tackle run for diaz he gets back to the last minute it's gonna be third down and 12 Oh boy, we have hit the two minute warning here in St. Louis. It's Tulsa 21, St. Louis 24, Gladiators in a do or die situation. Tulsa not wanting to drop three straight. This is gonna be a fantastic finish. Stay with us, this is the SFL on YouTube. Trips left, one to the right, and a sneak by a seal up the middle. Gets two yards back to the original line of scrimmage. First timeout burned by Tulsa, as the Gladiators are just playing for time now. That's one way to play, and I just don't feel like that's the way they should. But if they win, they can prove me wrong and shut me up. That's fine, but I just wanted them to go for seven. That's the safest possible. 
looks like the, it looked like the plan the entire drive was just get in a field goal range and kick. We saw a lot of heavy set, a lot of runs by Diaz, and he did come through in the clutch for them for a, a couple of those plays. And now, Ki uh, not Kissinger, Northrop on for the kick, and it is right down Main Street from 37 yards. It's a six-point game, St. Louis 27, Tulsa 21. 154 to go, fourth quarter. Like, I, I get I get what it is that they're doing, but it's a difference between six and potentially nine, because there'd be like, okay, if you, if you score a touchdown, if you score a touchdown here, they have to not only match the touchdown, but get a conversion. Kickoff on the way, received at the 10-yard line, up to the 20, Charles Ball, spin move past the 30, he's going the wrong way! He got up to the 35-yard line, they'll mark his forward progress down at the 34. I, does he know where he is? Because I don't know where he went. I, it didn't matter in the end, because they marked his forward progress all the way up to the yard line, but, um... Trips to the right, one to the left. We're working on uh, fixing the audio issue. Hang, pass over the middle, wide open, and down the... In Los Santos Robinson, no, it's Corey Jones. Shakes off a tackle, he scores! Put it on the board! One play, 75 yards! Tulsa on top again! With a chance to go on top again. And this is what exactly what I was talking about. I was talking about this. Look at this. You leave a person open, and now what do you do? Now what do you do? Now you probably lost the game by playing soft. That's 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 what that's that this. Ugh. K. Joseph Carroll is on the field now for the extra point that would give Tulsa their first lead of the game with a minute 39 to go. And it is good. 28-27. Tulsa has hung around the entire game, loitering about 14, 10 points behind, and they finally put it together. and taking the lead. Now it's St. Louis, who have to be the comeback kings with a minute 39 to go. They've got three timeouts. From the goal line, here's Peltier up to the 10. 15, 20, spin move, doesn't get him past the 23. So it's gonna be a monumental task for the Gladiators to get on the board and win the game. They only have to get into but considering how stop-start their offense has been this game, this has got to be one of those start moments. It's got to be one of those moments, like in the first half, where it's not even stop or start, it's just go. Two to the left, one to the right, on first down and ten from the 23. A seal stands in the pocket all day to throw, and now he's wrapped up and he goes down! Loss of six yards all the way back to the 17-yard line. They're going to hustle to the line. The receivers have got to retreat all the way back from upfield. They don't want to burn their first time out. A minute 15 to go. They get the snap off. Pressure again. A seal throws. That is caught up to the 35-yard line. And not going out of bounds was Scott. He did not He did not step out of bounds a minute to go another up-tempo play Peltier to the near side to Scott that pass is complete and now they'll stop the clock with an out-of-bounds play pick up the three yards 57 seconds to go we have Andy Hamilton singing Titanic music in the chat I don't know why but Near fall. Uh, second down and seven. Fifty-seven seconds to go in the ball game. Quick hitter out to Diaz. He's not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. But yes, he. A monumental effort. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. A timeout burned by St. Louis. 
wherever you are. Once again, the play calling is letting down the gladiators. Third down and seven. You're definitely in four down territory wherever you are now. Trips to the right, one to the left. They got to get up past the 45 for a first down. A seal back to pass. He launches one downfield and it's caught! All the way down to the Tulsa 31 yard line. Who picked that up? It was Swaim. Elijah Swaim from the tight end spot and they'll race down the field. 37 seconds to go. They're almost in field goal range. A seal, quick hitter to Diaz out of the backfield. Spin move and two gets him three yards. They will continue to go up tempo. Clock kicking down. 27 seconds to go from the 28 yard line. They'll continue to go up tempo. A seal now looking, looking short to the sticks. First down. Oh no, he dropped it. A lot of uh, Moss had the ball in his hands and he dropped it because of the hit. The clock stops 19 seconds to go and another third down and seven coming up. They're in field goal range right now, but with a non-contract kicker, it's not a gimme. Two receivers each side of the tight end. A seal alone in the backfield on third down and seven. He takes the snap. He throws to the bird. Ten, five, he caught it. First down and go at the five-yard line. Elijah Swain comes through it again. Time's still running. Time's still they're running. They're going to call a timeout with three seconds to go, and they're going to kick a chip shot field goal to try and win the ball game. You can put a record scratch on that Titanic music or keep it going, but for Tulsa. Oh, my goodness. What a game. St. Louis led the entire way through. Tulsa got a 65-yard touchdown to take the lead by one with less than a minute to go. And now, Je uh, Graham Northrup from 24 yards away for the win here we go snap hold kick on the way put it on the board with one second to go the st louis gladiators take the lead 30 to 28. carolina sends their regards unbelievable and now all they have to do is defend this kick. The ball is in the air from Northrop. Charles Ball has to be the hero on this kickoff. From the 10, 15, 20. He's got hit. Can he stay on his feet? No! Ball game over! Gladiators come back and win it with one second to go. St. Louis stays alive in the hunt for the playoffs with a 30 to 28 victory over the Tulsa Desperados who have now dropped three straight. Let's calm down a bit here in the booth. But Mercer, what is your take on this ball game? This was an exciting game at the end of it. Now, I can say that the scoreline belies what really went on. For parts of this game, there's been a bit of a lull here and there. A couple of the points came real early on. Uh, two possessions for uh, St. Louis. It was real quick and fast and in a hurry for some of these uh, scores. And then we, you know, it kind of tapered off. But at the end here, we realized that there was a hidden factor. There was time. And time kept ticking for both teams. Thank you, Levant. Uh, I'm not going to have time to run through the rest of the... Uh Sunday slate for you, but just tune in all day for some fantastic SFL action here on YouTube at the 5 p.m. Central slot, on Twitch at the 7 p.m. Central slot, and tomorrow night on Twitch at 7 p.m. Central. That'll do it for us, for Levant Mercer and our entire crew here in St. Louis, Missouri. I have been your play-by-play -play commentator, Michael Chirillo, saying see you next time!